These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. Thanks. Let's say that you have a mass of 0 0.04 grams. And the question is, how many kilograms is that? Do you have your textbook with you? Yeah. Okay, so if you need to look at any conversion ratios, you can look those up. Those are on the inside front cover. Um, I think so, but you should, uh, I just glanced at your syllabus and they said something just like the, um, it shouldn't be so complicated that it has like a, a letter keypad or something. So I think this would go, but uh, the only way to be sure is to ask the TA. Okay. So this is what I Okay, yeah, that looks like it didn't give me any trouble. You saw that you have to put grams on the bottom to cancel the grams on the top. The big mistake people make is multiplying when they should divide or dividing when they should multiply, but it looks like you know how to set up the ratio to deal with that. And then you got 4 times 10 to the negative fifth, and that would be in kilograms. Okay, good. Yeah, so it looks like you're uh, comfortable with that. Um, how about if you have 0 0.04 meters? And we need to translate, uh, translate that into micrometers. So here's your basic conversion factors, and here is your metric prefixes. So these are the two parts that you need. Okay, so a micrometer is 10 to the negative 6? That's right. Do you see how we can use that to do the conversion here? So what that table is telling you is that it tells you what uh, each of the prefixes mean. So what that table is actually telling us is that one micrometer equals 10 to the negative 6 meters, which I think maybe is the reverse of your first guess. So yeah, so that would be 4 times 10 to the negative 2. So I'll check that, that, that sounds fine. Should I be using parentheses or anything? That would be a good thing for us to talk about. Yeah, oftentimes students don't know when to put in parentheses. So as we go along, every time you need parentheses, maybe I'll be pointing that out. But so far, we don't need any parentheses. You need parentheses when there's more than one thing on the top or the bottom of a fraction. Here we don't really have that, so but we'll see as we go along when, when we need parentheses, but here we go. So you got 40,000, that's fine. 40,000 what's? Um, micrometers. Okay, so there's going to be tons of metric prefixes throughout the course. 
Um, so that metric prefix table is very important to understand. And this is what I meant when I said people oftentimes tend to multiply when they should divide or divide when they should multiply. At first, we were going to be multiplying when we needed to divide. So let's make sure we can, uh, and so the key thing is to be able to write this equivalency. And then you know where the one goes and where the 10 to the negative 6 goes. Okay. So let me give you uh, another example. Let's say that we wanted to know how uh, the relationship between, say, meters and nanometers. So let's find what's the number in the table for nanometers. That's right, not the reverse. Okay. okay. Or um, let's say we wanted um, to do um, milligrams and grams. What would the table tell us when you're ready? So milli is 10 to the negative 3. So there's 10 to the negative 3 milligrams in one gram. That's right. OK, looks like you got it. Um, so uh, not the reverse. So it's important to have these examples clearly in um, your notes because this will keep coming up throughout the course. Now, all of these conversion ratios could be written in different ways. These are just one good way to write it. For example, uh, I think you probably maybe already know that there are um, let's see, one of these is wrong. Which of these is wrong? Maybe you said the right thing and I wrote it down wrong. Which of these did I write down wrong? No, they're both wrong. Really? Maybe you said the right thing, but I didn't write the right things on the board. Yeah. So here's the problem. Remember, that table is not supposed to tell you what it, uh, what's in a meter. It's supposed to tell you what's in a nanometer. Let's take a look at this over here again. We both got, so you can see how confusing it is. We both got confused again. We're not following our pattern over here. All right, so uh, let's try again. What that table is telling us is that nano means 10 to the negative 9. It's telling us that nano means 10 to the negative 9. Well, that means that a nanometer is 10 to the negative 9 meters. Well, so I would do like the conversion of the That's right. That's exactly what this equation is telling us. Now, so you're, you're asking how do you get the conversion ratio? The conversion ratio, though, just comes from these equivalencies. Um, so, uh, for example, here, we have one micrometer equals 10 to the negative 6 meters. So wherever I put the micrometer, that goes with the number 1. And wherever I put the, the letter M, the meters, that goes with the 10 to the negative 6. So that one's right. Yeah. This one we got right, but then these two both got confused. Um, so we, we really need to clarify that because this is a very important issue. So um, before you do any specific unit conversion, you have to be able to write down an equation that shows the equivalency. And that's what we're doing here. Okay. All right. Um, so let's see. Do you see now why this equation is correct? Or yeah, that's simply what the table is telling us. And is it correct for the bottom one, 10 to the negative 3 milligrams and 1 gram? Yeah, we got that one wrong too. Because milla means 10 to the negative 3. So a milligram means 10 to the negative 3 grams. And nano means 10 to the negative 9. So a nanometer means 10 to the negative 9 meters. So maybe a way of thinking about it is like the, the, this is the power of the meter, right? These are yes. all like um, extrapolation from the meter. Yeah, I think that would help. Okay. I think that would help. Uh, except it does, it's not just for meters. It, we could have said that um, one nano, we, we could have said that one nanogram is 10 to the negative 9 grams. So. It's, right. it, it could be for any base unit. It could be, be for seconds or meters or grams. Those are just like kind of qualifications of the unit, right? Yeah. So basically, the, the point is we're supposed to use these to get the right conversion ratio. And the note you want to make to yourself is this goes in front of, say, the, the base unit. If we think of the base unit as being the one with no prefix at all. Right. If you think of the base unit as being the one with no prefix at all, these numbers in the table are telling us what goes in front of that base unit. All right, so.
let's make sure we got that right. So we put the number in front of the base unit. Good. We put this power, so we're putting the power of 10 in front of the base unit. And here we're putting the power of 10 in front of this base unit. When I say base unit, I just mean the unit without the metric prefix. And here we're putting the power of 10 in front of the unit without the metric prefix. Okay. So let's say we were dealing with picoseconds and seconds. Let's write the equation that relates picoseconds and seconds. So there's 10 to the negative 12. One picosecond equals 10 to the negative 12 seconds. Yeah, that's correct. We're putting the number from the table in front of the unit without the metric prefix. So that's just what you have to have in your notes. Okay. And you can put that in your cheat sheet um, as well. 